Yeah, surprise, surprise, raining again. Although this is like a real light rain, just steady. And the windows obviously are doing a great job letting air in and keeping the rain out. Um, if the rain comes in sideways, it'll spit inside the windows a little bit, like if it gets heavier. Um, but in this little steady rain, it's doing great. So we're on to wiring. And I've decided for the 110 wiring, I'm going to use some uh, flexible conduit because trying to get rigid conduit and 90s in all these little spaces is going to be a nightmare. Well, I'll tell you what, this flexible conduit, without a second person and without like pulling it dead straight, um, is a tough bastard because every one of those little bends, um, even that little guy, that little bend right there, bites on the cable and the uh, fish tape. You can see I've got the end held so I can kind of pull the conduit at the other end and hold it straight and there's my fish tape. Um, and what I'm feeding through that now is just uh, 110, it's 12, 12 to the ground or 12 three I think is what they call it. And it's, I don't know, that's obviously the one leg that I used to pull it through. This is about a half inch, maybe a little less in diameter and it fits pretty well inside there like I've got plenty of slack um, and pulling it by itself goes pretty well but trying to get the fish tape in that through sucks um, same thing with the uh, 10-3 for my 30 amp I've got a uh, three-quarter conduit going under the stairs coming up under the bathroom under the entry area under the bathroom and I've already got the plug set in place on the back side of the bay well look at that in a second um, Reason I'm running 110 in flexible conduit under the coach instead of the uh, wire loom is it's going to be a bastard fixing this if it goes bad. So my only thought was it'd be easy to just pull it from one to the other. Um, and they're basically straight shots. So I'm going from the control area underneath the frame to my oasis. So that's a straight shot. Um, Whereas with the 12 volt, like the 12 volt wiring for the bay lights, I'm going to be jumping in and out of every bay. So I need the wire loom to come in and out of, um, and something about 110, I just like having in conduit. So I've got my 30 amp coming in down there, the white one. And then I've got another, um, I think that's six, four jumping across to my Island. So basically it's coming across from my main breaker panel and it's going to feed a sub panel. Um, and the reason being is because that sub panel is going to be in part of the slide out because I was having a hard time figuring out how to get power to the slide out, obviously jumping between solid surface and moving surface. So I think I've got that figured out, but I had to get a feed under the floor before I bury this thing. So that's where I'm at. I think we're going to tape this for a little bit, see how the next pull goes. <laughs> Well, the next big shipment of wire just came in and I've got everything from 14-2, 12-2, 8-2, and 6-2, which is again, two strand wire rated for 12 volt, yellow and red, yellow's the ground. So let's see, here's 6-2, there's the end of a big pen and that 6.2 is probably bigger than that big pen. Um, I've got mast wire, which is the controls wire for the 
actuators for the roof. I've got some double aught, which is about the size of my middle finger. <laughs> that is for the um, hydraulic jacks. That's the power for the jacks. And then I've got some two gauge. And this is the crazy thing. So I'm running. Oh, damn it. Stuff is heavy. Um, and two gauge is probably a little smaller than my pinky. And again, this is all marine grade wire. It's been tinned. And that's about the size of a Sharpie. And I've got two gauge and four gauge. Can't remember. I think the four gauge is for the Oasis. And the two gauge ground and hot wire are for the power to the actuators. Um, and it seems like such an insanely big wire since the wires coming off the actuators are what? Uh, 12 gauge, which is this guy right here. So one of these guys, so there's the 12 gauge and you see the red and the 12 and that red on the uh, two gauge, so two gauge, 12, 12, two. The jacks are actually wired with 12 gauge wire, which is this. But since I'm running so many amps um, to each of the jacks for power, 40 amps, I need a larger wire. And we'll go over that uh, in a little bit. But there's my wire supply, 1500 bucks worth of wire, which is a bargain because there was a local marine store selling the exact same wire for just under three grand. So, I'm happy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, cutting the thicker wire for some reason is a little more stressful than cutting the 12-2 the or 14-2. This stuff is four gauge and I laid it out for my Oasis. And I've got actually two two individual lines. One's gonna be switched, one's gonna be hot to the Oasis. And this is 12 volt. Um, keep in mind, this stuff is four gauge, which is pretty stout. Um, ran that, ran my water pump line. Just kind of laid them out. Uh, just pulling my little distribution center here, just pulling the spools. You know what I mean. They're almost empty, so they're not pulling so well. But this is what's left of my four gauge. I'm sure I'll use that for something else. Um, but yeah, starting to lay out wire and I think I'm going to lay it all out, what's left, and calculate what I need for conduit and go get the conduit and start putting everything in conduit because, again, everything under the frame is going to be buried forever and if anything ever goes wrong, I want to be able to get to it, A, and B, hopefully never make or make sure that nothing ever goes wrong. So yeah, starting to run wire, again. Again. <laughs> yeah, I know what that is, yeah. All right, tube, starting the big stuff. I've got my soap. I got my 6.2 down at that end, way down there in half inch. Coming through here, and I've also got, ah, let's see, these four guys are gonna go in one, or is it three in one? What am I thinking? Oh no, these four guys. So it's those two and that one. So the two, um, two gauge and the five strand. Uh, mass wire are going in a one inch so these will go into two one inch sleeves and then believe it or not I think I can get where is it these four um, for the what are these these are the Oasis that's what it is God <laughs> so my plan is to get these four 
in one, one inch, and those are for the uh, Oasis, the two 12 volt runs. So I've got some of the 8.2 and 6.2 strong, and now I'm running the uh, two gauge and four gauge, what is this one? Uh, I think this is two, this is four. Ah, this is for the Oasis. So I've got four four gauge lines going into this uh, one inch conduit and I had to like pin it down, stretch it out, soap it up to get it in, but it's in. And yeah, that helped. Stepped it down from like one to two to three and then to four. And we'll run this under the chassis now and put it where it's supposed to go. But there was no way that was going in with any bends in it. So I'm pretty happy. Next, my, uh, what is that, two gauge and um, five strand conduit, or five strand uh, mast wire is what they call it. Two of those and one of those together. Let's see what happens. <sighs> It's hot. <laughs> so I've got my two, I think two gauge. Can't I can never remember. Yeah, two two gauge and my um, five strand going into one inch, and I'm having to pull the one inch out of the rig because it's actually by the time it bends and curves, it's longer than the rig, the inside of the rig anyway. So I've got it pinned down at this end. And I'm running out here to get it straight. And what I'm doing is I'm lifting this up and pulling. dang tube got some wire and plumbing in all but my bay door the little 16 gauge running around on the surface is the bay door locks they've got uh, auto locks on them that'll tie into the coach but all my wire for my jacks for the compressor for the water pump for my 110 my 12 volt 24 volt it's under the frame and it's crazy that it just doesn't look like that much was put in. Obviously I've got every, everything in conduit um, as far as the wire goes and running up into my little areas. Uh, that's air compressor. Those are bay lights. I've got my Oasis plumbed in. It worked out great. These guys, I've got four of these guys in this one inch conduit. Uh, I was able to get all four of them in, which worked out amazing. And that's, believe it or not, running 12 volts. I've got um, a light here. I've got my uh, 110 already run in. And obviously all the plumbing's in. And I've got, like I said, conduit everywhere. And I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I've got uh, most of it run uh, along the frame rail and the tank. So it kind of locks things in place a little bit. Um, I think there's three or four on this side, two on this side, then like the next layer down, there's another um, bunch of pipes and a bunch of conduit. And as we get closer to the back, you can kind of see that there is a bunch in there, man. And these guys, where are we at? Can't get my hand in there. These guys are one inch, there's a couple three quarter and the rest are half inch. And all that stuff in the front of the coach, both sides, all this on this side, that side um, is going into my electrical bay, which I've had to expand. Originally, it was just kind of this area here and actually it's gonna come over about eh, three, four inches. So it's basically a one foot by one foot cube that'll be a giant closet 
Um, but I've got so much cable coming in that we're actually gonna run into the bay and under and create a chase inside the bay for the conduit on this side. Um, but you can see it is just a cluster in here. Um, I've got to screw these guys down up top, but uh, it's all in. Uh, like I said, my, my jack controls are in. And like I said, this is 12 volt. You can see the size, it's almost as big as my pinky. That's uh, two gauge. And the reason being is uh, the jacks will actually pull 40 amps. Then I'll have a 40 amp fuse on the jacks, but I still have to protect the wire. Uh, and I have to be able to carry that current on the wire. And this is that mast wire that will give me the individual controls. What we got here? So on my hydraulic actuator, or sorry, electric actuators, I've got one line that's, uh, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? They've got 12 gauge here, and I've got to run across the whole coach with two gauge to supply this thing. So I'll put a, a terminal block in here and uh, put ends on these guys and screw them down and connect it via the terminal block to those ends. And then I have got, let's see, one, two, I think it's eight strand um, wire in, in this bundle. And I only need really, let's see, the, the hot, the ground, and one control wire possibly a second because the way these work is the first one gets wired with three control wires and then one wire comes out and is basically a uh, master for all the slaves so one jack moves at a certain rate and the other ones move at the same rate um, based on whoever's the master and all the slaves so I have one master three slaves so it is in tube, everything, like I said, everything is in under the floors. I'm putting in my last bit of wiring, which is gonna be two things. 14 gauge for the bay locks, 14.2, and then I've got a thermostat in the bathroom. Anyway, back to this. So I've got my wire loom, and what I'm doing is I'm, I didn't get a tool uh, one, they didn't have it. Two, I didn't feel like spending 25 bucks because um, I don't have real big runs. I've taken a, a 3 8 wrench, wrapped it around the um, cable, and I'm just pulling it along, and it seems to work pretty well and a heck of a lot better than with my fingers. So let's see here. So basically all I'm doing is just running it and just kind of pushing a little bit into the loom. But <laughs> $20 save, baby. And that works pretty well. And I'll I'll run that all the way to the end of this thing. That actually works way better than I thought it would. And it just pops out and probably not quite as fast as the tool, but man, versus your fingers trying to split this stuff open. This is awesome. <laughs> So happy day, Tube. Happy, happy, happy day. Conduit's in, everything's tied up, everything's secured. I've got zip ties in a couple places, but for the most part, I've got everything attached to the frame someplace with these uh, rubber-lined um, clamps, aluminum clamps. And the reason I went with these is two reasons. One, so the aluminum doesn't have a chance to cut into anything, because I knew I would have to use it on my plumbing. So instead of buying two separate clamps, one, or brackets, whatever they are, one for the plumbing and one for the electrical, I just bought the ones with the rubber. Um, they also will isolate um, vibrations and movement. So yeah, you know what's crazy? is trying to get from the ground down there through that little space, which is about 12 inches, all the way up to those three guys. Uh, it took me about two hours. Uh, Cause obviously I didn't have somebody holding anything in place. Uh, I got my butt kicked a little bit on those three stinking clamps, but don't care. It's lovely. I am happy. And we're gonna start tidying stuff up and hopefully get some insulation and floor going down. Boom!